So the Collaborate environment is basically Blackboard's way to have a live web conference. It's similar to Google Hangouts or Adobe Connect. It's just Blackboard's version of that type of software. And we can access it in two ways. By default, it's not going to be in your navigation menu. So you have to come over to Tools and on that new tool page, go to the Blackboard Collaborate tool right here and then click on this guy. And once you do, you have this scheduling page. Now, if we're going to be using Collaborate, I like to make sure that this link is as easy to find as possible. So I'm going to go over here on my navigation area, click on the plus and add a tool link. That tool link, I can call anything, but I'm going to call it uh, Blackboard Collaborate. And then they type, which tool are we using? Well, we are using the Blackboard Collaborate tool. Make sure it's available to users and hit Submit. And then drag it somewhere so it's a little bit easier to find. I like putting it in this top third area right above the discussion board. Your preference might differ. And if we click on this, it will bring us to the exact same page. So our Blackboard Scheduling Manager. And any of your users will see the scheduling sessions if you have any, and then the recordings sessions, if you have any. They will not see the actual option to create a new session. That's only for instructors or TAs. So if we go here, what do we see? Well, well, for one, we can name our session whatever we want, and we have a start time and an end time. If you click on the start time, we have this pop-up. And these arrows at the top is how you can adjust the month and the day that your session will start. So it is the 13th, that's why the 13th is in yellow. Even if I click off of it onto the 21st or 22nd, the current day is still in highlight. So we're going to begin on the 14th, and below that we have two sliders. The top slider is just for setting the hour. So right now it's 6.40, so I can't have a course begin at 6.30 because 6.30 has already passed. So I have to go to the next increment. 6.45 is five minutes away, cutting it kind of close. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to be 7, 7 p.m. And then the minute slider is this one down here. And you have to set your minutes when a 15-minute interval. So we have... 45, 30, 15, and then 0, 0. And hit Done. So we're going to begin our session on the 14th. Today is the 13th. That's why it's a highlight. Hit Done. And then the same for the end time. Now you can end whenever you want. You could end in two months. You could even end hypothetically next year if you wanted to. So we're going to not do that, but it's the same properties. So you have your calendar, you have your month that you shift back and forth. Uh, now because we are beginning in the future, the 14th, we can't have the course end on the 13th because that would be dumb. But we can have it end on the 14th, and we'll say 9 p.m. So at 9 p.m., so again, this is our hour slider at the top, so 9, and then the minute will be 0. So hour and minute. Go ahead and hit done. Now if you want them to start early, you do not change an earlier time here. The reason for that is we have a special field right here called early session entry. And this is where you can choose how early you want people to be able to get into the course in case they have any questions for you or if they want to experiment with getting the collaborate environment to work. This is where you choose that. Uh, we usually have it set to 15 minutes, but you can go as high as an hour. But again, you'll see that 15 minute increment. Or increment. Incremental, new word. Now, for the session type, by default, you're going to usually keep them set to course. You only choose shared if you want that collaborate room to be accessible to all of your courses or a set number of courses. So for example, maybe we're going to make a office hour collaborate session, and I want that collaborate session to run from the 14th all the way to the end of the semester. And I don't want to have to rebuild this same office hour 
room for every unique course. Well, what you can do is you can click on Shared, and under Additional Courses, click this little white area here, and you'll have a drop-down menu of all the other courses you can add that will basically insert this Collaborate session. But again, by default, most of your courses are going to be of the course type, not the shared type. And if you move your mouse over any of these little icons with the eye, it's an infographic or tool tip. And it will tell you a, a very brief overview of what this option is for. For a teleconference, we do like to use the built-in teleconference feature because some users, especially on lower bandwidth, they do have a much better experience listening to the audio if it's over the phone and not through the web interface. Just know that if you use this, they will incur any long distance charge that applies. Now for the attributes. For recording mode, we always set the mode to manual as default. If you're never going to record it, you can set it to disabled. But we may or may not, so we always go with manual. And the max number of talkers. This is really critical because a lot of people keep this at the default value of one. And what this means is that only one mic can be active at once. So if somebody asks you a question and they forget to turn the microphone off, you can't reply until they do. And it causes all kinds of annoying problems. So I usually set this to three. So you have someone who's talking, someone who's replying, and then somebody who can come in and interject. And then for the max number of cameras, I usually keep it to the same number of talkers, but again, it's up to you. Uh, you can even go higher, up to a maximum of six. And then view private messages. What this is, if this is on, what you're going to find is you as the instructor can view all of the private conversations your users are having with each other. Um, now, if, if you want to create a room that's very anonymous and they can communicate freely without fear of you looking in, then you would set this to be off. And then for the participant permissions, this basically, if we move over the tooltip, will tell us that this gives everybody access to the camera, microphone, chat, and the whiteboard, which we do want. So we're going to go ahead and keep this default to on. Now, raise hand on entry. What this does is it will play a little ding sound, and you'll see a hand icon appear whenever a user joins. And that hand will stay in place until they manually take the icon off. Personally, I find it really obnoxious, so I don't use it, but some instructors like it. So, again, it's up to you. We choose no. Now, allow in-session invitations and allow guests. These are both important because sometimes if a user can't authenticate with Blackboard's server, for whatever reason, the guest link that you can give them will, most of the time, allow them to get through. So they can still access the course as a guest, they just enter in their name as the username, and then you'll, you'll see them just as if they were in the Collaborate session through Blackboard. It's just a different way of doing it in case they're having problems connecting. And if you are going to be recording these sessions, it's always good to hide the names in the recording, and this would be a policy that would be determined by your institution. But if you're intending on maybe reusing some of your content or recorded lectures, for future courses, you should disable this so that you maintain people's privacy, like their names. And then for preload content, if you have somebody who has a PowerPoint or a video file, they could add it to the Collaborate session as part of the session. Um, just know that it is going to add to the loading time of Collaborate, and usually we don't do this because we can share our screen. Or there, there, there are better ways of sharing content than uploading it as part of the session itself. But you can do that if you want to. And if you want to grade participation for their participation, not just on a per class basis, but if we go over here to repeat, it'd be for the entire series. We would go over to this section here and choose yes. And then we'll say, you know, 100 points for the semester for attending this Collaborate session.
And then for roles and access, you have the ability to enable all users to be moderators, which if you're doing it for a professional, like maybe they're all grad students and you trust them, then you can make them all moderators. If you have a large course or people are, are very new to the collaborate environment, you, you probably should not check this. What a moderator can do is they can share their screen, they can interrupt your screen share if you are sharing, and they can kick people and add people. And as an instructor, they can't, well, as an instructor, whoever you make a moderator, they can't kick you, but they can kick other people. And as the instructor of the course, you have the ability to right click any user and make them a moderator or take it away at any time. So by default, we usually don't enable this for our larger courses. But again, there will be courses where maybe you want this to be enabled. And it's going to be up to you and depend on your course and the people in the course. And last but not least, if you want to restrict this access to a certain number of users, you would check this box and then click on Add Participants to open up a new window of your users. And this is where you can then add individuals to this conference. So you can create collaborate rooms for a, a single group of users or even one user if you want to have kind of a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session and not worry about other people popping on while that session is taking place. So you can restrict access to your Collaborate session at any time. And you can change this even after the session is created and even while the session is running. Just note that whatever you change isn't going to appear for anybody already in the room. They'll have to log out and log back in before they see whatever you've changed. And then last but not least on this page, I want to turn our attention to this repeat function up here. So if I'm going to have a collaborate course, in this case, uh, beginning tomorrow, Thursday at 7 p.m. until 9, so two-hour session, maybe I'm going to have this class every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. So I don't want to have to recreate these collaborate sessions for every single day. So I'm going to go over to repeat and click on the off button and set to on. If we choose daily, we can choose how many times per day this course or this shell will be copied or propagated. And we can choose how many occurrences that will be. Under weekly, we can choose which days. So we're going to have it every Sunday, Thursday, and Saturday. And by default, this this day will be checked for whatever day you are actually making this session. It's kind of an annoying feature, but just be aware of that. So Wednesday was selected because today is Wednesday. And because the class begins on Thursday and not Wednesday, you have to go over here and make sure it's not white. And then we can choose, is it going to end after a certain number of occurrences or after a certain date? Now for us, the semester for this um, winter or spring or whatever they want to call it. It's going to end in early May. So I'm going to make this collaborate session propagate until a week after May just to be safe. Maybe we have some late minute people who are trying to get caught up. So we'll do May 11th. So now what's going to happen is when I hit submit, we're going to make a collaborate session three times a week, every week, until May 11th, 2016. I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. And now we will see in our list of scheduled sessions, we have our success message at the top after waiting for about a minute for all of these courses to propagate. And then we have in our list all of our courses. So now, here we are. So here, life is good. Now again, if you move your mouse over any of these session titles, these links, you're going to see that circle with the drop down. And this is what you can click to either edit a session or edit the entire series. And so you can change any aspect of your room at any time. But again, if you're editing a series or a session and it's already running, nobody is going to see that change until they log in 
and then log or log out, log back in. At least with how ours is currently configured. That might change in the future, but for now, that's how it is. And if it's currently active, you're going to have this little icon, this purple icon here, that you can click on. So for this example here, I've already had a Collaborate room running from January 6th, and it runs until the end of the month on the 31st. And you can have as many concurrent Collaborate rooms as you need, essentially. And if you come to any of these links here, I'm going to go over and click on this second one here. We come to our room details. And the room details is where we see our information, like our guest URL. So if somebody's having a hard time logging in, we can give them this guest URL and try that. We have, if you're using a phone bridge, we have our moderator phone number and the PIN number and then the participant phone and PIN number. Now because this room isn't active, we don't have a join room right here. But if you come to this session that is ongoing right now, we don't have the phone information because I did not use it, but we do have this guest URL. And over here on the left-hand side, we have our start date and time, our end date and time, and then a blue join room button. Or if you've never run a Collaborate session before, we have a link to the one-time Blackboard Collaborate launch installer. And that's pretty much all there is to it to making a Collaborate room. It might seem like a lot, but I guarantee after you do it once or twice, it'll be a piece of cake because the process is the same every single time. And then because this was, these were all for an example, I'm going to go ahead and select this little button here to choose all of my sessions except for my top one here, and then go over and delete them because I do not need these sessions as part of my actual course. And then review the delete options and then, yep, confirm. Once I hit confirm, they are now all gone, and I am left now with my original example. Now, a quick note on the recordings. The recordings are going to be in two types. They're going to have a Collaborate link where they basically open up the Collaborate room, and they kind of see a rewind of whatever was typed and shown in class. And they can also download it as a, an actual video file if you are the instructor and you want to save these as something other than a collaborate java based application so you would see a link of video files you could choose and save to your computer now with the recording the recordings should be based off of whenever you hit the start recording button and the stop recording button and then you close out of that collaborate window Closing out of that window is essentially you telling the server that whatever you're recording, that is now going to be a self-contained video, and that video ends when you close the Collaborate session. And so this is how you are able to still have multiple recordings, even if you have a single Collaborate session that might be running for four months. You just record, stop record, close Collaborate, and then you should see just that segment appear in a list right here.